now that the misconception of distinction between Allah's prophets and messengers have been clarified, I must inform you of one of the most distinguished prophets in the Quran as I am not to conceal the truth and reality of the book. As you measure, observe, and study the magnificent Quran, there are many books of the prophets, along with many of their attributes. By far, the following prophets are most distinguished in the Quran. Prophet Noah, Prophet Ibrahim, Prophet Musa, Prophet David, Prophet Sulaiman, Prophet Jesus, and finally, Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon all of Allah's prophets. But according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the Quran, one prophet among them has been strikingly distinguished and unites all of them. And it has been commanded by Allah to closely follow him. And that prophet is Prophet Ibrahim. Salamun ala Ibrahim. I'm not basing this out of personal opinion. Rather, I will show you Quranic facts about this. So please bear with me and make sure you pay close attention. This news will be unveiled by Allah's permission as you unlock the Bayyinat, one of the major hidden leaves, one of the first Suhuf, Suhufi Ibrahim, the leaves, pages, scripts, scrolls of Abraham. The Quran Transposition Cipher of Abraham, QTC Ibrahim. The Suhufi Ibrahim, the leaves, scrolls of Abraham. The Book of Abraham is the second biggest Quran cipher with 21 different surahs transposed. And they are the following surahs, respectively. A total of 271 transposed verses without repetition. The Quran transposition cipher of Ibrahim, the art of the hidden leaves. Make sure you download it for free to read its full content. First and foremost, after you transpose, rearrange each verse, Surah 16 verse 101, in order of first to last events of his history. You can then read Prophet Abraham's full story chronologically. Then, after carefully studying the full details by Allah's permission, you will notice many important notions and a powerful fundamental acknowledgement from our Creator in regards to Prophet Abraham. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded all of us to closely follow the religion, legacy, creed of Abraham. Millata Ibrahim Hanifa, as said in Surah 3, verse 95. Qul, say, Allah has spoken truthfully, sincerely. So closely follow, plural, everyone, the religion, legacy, creed of Ibrahim, Abraham, as a Hanifa. And he was not among the idol worshippers, polytheists, mushrikins. Note how the verse starts with Qul, as this is a command to say and follow. And then Allah allows the command by saying, Allah has spoken truthfully and sincerely. Qul sadaq Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is authorizing the following, that we all closely follow the religion, legacy, creed of Prophet Abraham, Hanifa. Here, Prophet Ibrahim is being coined with the noun Hanif. As a matter of a fact, Prophet Ibrahim السلام, is the only one in the Quran that Allah refers to as a Hanif. This is a very important distinction. Since this is commanded by Allah, and it is said in many places in the Quran that we will soon see, it is therefore obligatory to closely follow Millata Ibrahim Hanifa Wama Kana Min al Mushrikin. The Arabic word for religion, legacy, creed is Milla, which also mostly refers to Prophet Ibrahim in that context of the Quran, being another important distinction. But like I said, it's his attribute of a Hanif that is very distinguished and recognized. So what does Hanif, Hanifa mean? The noun Hanifa is in the singular accusative case causing its pronunciation as Hanifa or Hanifan, Hanifa in puzzle form. But as an indefinite noun, it's simply Hanif. And through the dictionary, Hans War, it defines as follows. So first as a verb in form one, Hanafa, it literally interprets as to turn or bend sideways. This is usually referred to as a foot turned bent sideways. 
but it also refers to someone who does not follow the norm or false traditions. This will become more evident as we get into the noun form. As a noun, Hanif, this is how it's always referenced in the Quran and not as a verb. So as a noun, Hanif, and as plural, Hunafa means 1. A true believer. 2. Orthodox. 3. One who scorns the false creeds surrounding him and professes the true religion. 4. True religion. And 5. Ad-Din Hanif. The true religion or the true judgment. And this involves deductive reasoning. The third definition, one who scorns the false creed surrounding him and professes the true religion, this is based on the example of what Prophet Ibrahim demonstrated in the Quran, deductive reasoning, as we will soon see. And that is a definition rather than an English translation of the Arabic word Hanif. Since the Quran is fully detailed, Allah has defined what a Hanif or Hunafa are. The best way to find out is by pulling out all the occurrences of Hanif in the Quran which is repeated 12 times in the entire Quran. These are the following verses, respectively. Let's first see Surah 30 verse 30, and then Surah 22 verse 31, as they both provide key definitions. So establish your face to the religion, judgment of Hanifa. فَأَقِيمْ وَجَحَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفَ فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا The fitra of Allah, God instinct which he has originated, made native, fatara, mankind upon. La li khalqillah. There's no change to the creation of Allah. Thalika deenun qayyib, walakinna akthara nasi la ya'lamu. That is the valuable religion, judgment. However, most of mankind do not know. A hanif, hanifa, is the natural God instinct that everyone has within them. For example, any kind of dangerous situation like a plane going through turbulence, or a ship sailing and there comes a storm of waves from everywhere and the people therein assume that they are surrounded, everyone automatically implores Allah alone. That is the natural God instinct we all have. Yet, when Allah saves them, most revert back to their wrong ways or polytheistic mentality. Keep that in mind, and in Surah 22 verse 31, Allah further describes what a Hanif is, but in plural, Hunafa'a, Hanifs, Hanifas, as follows. Hunafa'a lillahi ghayra mushrikina bi. True monotheists unifiers to Allah. Hanifas to Allah. Without sharing, associating partners with Him, and he who shares associates partners with Allah, then it is as though he had fallen from the sky, heaven. So the birds snatch him, grab him, or the wind drops, falls, sweeps down with him into a distant, remote, faraway place. Surah Hajj 22 verse 31 clearly illustrates that Hanifs, Hanifas, Hunafa are the complete opposite of a mushrikin, idol worshippers, polytheists. We never associate partners with Allah. Thus, the translation of a Hanif through the Quran is what a true monotheist or a unifier is, having the natural tendency within oneself to unify others to remember and worship one God, Allah Wahda, Allah alone, one God instinct. Just like in the dictionary, one who scorns the false creed surrounding him and professes the true religion, that is a true monotheist unifier a Hanif, or in the accusative, Hanifa. It is best to anglicize it as Hanifa or Hanif, then putting its interpretation in parenthesis, exactly how we've anglicized the noun Muslim, one who surrenders. To put this into perspective, the prime example of a Hanifa, Hanif, in the Quran is Prophet Ibrahim a.s. As he destroyed all the gods of his people into pieces, except for a large one, so that they may refer to it. So before Prophet Ibrahim executed the plot of destroying the gods of his people, except for a large one, he came to Allah wholeheartedly with a sound heart. And Allah had given him his rationality, rushda, and certainty. These are important qualities, especially his rationality, 
Rushda because he used common sense, deductive reasoning, and logic to come to the conclusion that there must be only one God. He rationalized this through the creation of the heavens and the earth. He was looking for our Lord, Allah. He glanced at the stars and noticed a planet that eventually set and disappeared. He disliked what sets and disappears. He noticed the same thing with the moon and realized he must require guidance or else he will for sure go astray. And finally, when he saw the sun emerging at verse 78, he noticed it was the greatest visible celestial object, but it set and disappeared too. And then it clicked. At the end of Surah 6, Al-An'am, verse 78, he denounced the false idea of multiple gods, disassociates and exempts himself from his idol-worshipping people while understanding the root cause of creation. Qala, he said, O oh my people, indeed I am exempt, innocent, free from what you associate as partners. Ya qawmi inni now pay close attention because Prophet Abraham then proclaims the utterance of a Hanif by clarifying the root cause of creation that all arguments point to. Indeed, I have aimed, directed, faced my face to the one who split, broke apart, originated the heavens and the earth as a Hanifa, and I am not among the idol worshippers, polytheists, mushrikin. Subhanallah, that is the original declaration of becoming a Hanif, and Prophet Abraham was the first to proclaim it among the Hunafa'a in the Quran. And Allah has preserved it and commanded us to closely follow this path of one who scorns the false creed surrounding him and professes the true religion. Hence, a Hanif is truly the opposite of a mushrik, an idol worshipper. Prophet Abraham's heart and mindset have been established as a Hanif, which requires rationality, rushd. With that in mind, he then questioned his father and his people. But he started with his father and then all of them together. Prophet Abraham also pinpointed who the root cause of idol worshipping was. Satan. He clearly exposed Satan when he was trying to convince his father. Prophet Abraham was the first prophet in the Quran to directly mention Satan, the leader of Allah's enemy as the root cause of idolatry. Unfortunately, his father rejected what he told him by saying, He said, have you no desire about my gods, O oh, Ibrahim? Surely, if you do not come to an end, terminate, finish, desist, I will most definitely stone you. So distance me, abandon me for a long while. After these heartbreaking words were uttered by his father, Prophet Abraham then offered his peace and forgiveness to him by saying, He said, Salamun alayk, peace be upon you. I shall ask my Lord's forgiveness for you. Indeed, he has been, was very welcoming, hospitable, generous with me. And then he said, And I will keep away, detach, disassociate, leave, withdraw from you and those you invoke, call, pray to, other than Allah. And I will invoke, call, pray to my Lord. Perhaps that I will not be unhappy, miserable, wretched with my Lord's prayer, invocation. That was truly a difficult emotional intelligence test. And the tests just got harder. So after he warned his father with reason and logic, he went against his people and his father. Once again, Prophet Ibrahim used logic and reason to wake them up. I will be paraphrasing his rationality through the Quran. And he asked them, What are these statues to which you are worshipping so devoutly? They said, we worship idols, so we remain devoted to them. After the response, he questioned them again. Can they hear you when you call them? Or do they benefit you? Or can they harm you? They said, rather, we found our fathers worshipping them like that. Then in Surah 21 verse 54, 
he certifies that his people and their forefathers have been obviously astray. You have certainly been, you and your forefathers, obviously astray. His people weren't sure if he was telling the truth or if he was playing. They said, have you brought us the truth or are you joking? Thus, he put his people in a check position and then he utters the truth with the remembrance of Allah. He said, Rather, your Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, the one who split, broke apart, initiated them. And I am to all of that among the witnesses, testifiers. Then Prophet Abraham continues to question them, and then differentiating himself from them. Indeed, he was on another level with the remembrance of Allah. He said, Therefore, have you seen what you have been worshipping? Question. You and your ancient fathers. Question. They are indeed enemies to me, except the Lord of the realms, worlds. The one who created me, then he guided me. And he is the one who feeds me and lets me drink. And when I am sick, he then heals me. And the one who puts me to death then he brings me back to life. And the one who, I hope, that he will forgive me my mistakes, faults on the day of judgment. And by Allah, I will most definitely plot out wit against your idols after you go away, turning your backs. Thus they turned away from him, turning their backs. Hence, after he questioned them, he strikes them with the remembrance of Allah. And then, Prophet Abraham did something no one did before. He plotted and outwitted to defeat and destroy their gods by a greater ingenuity, but with a twist. He also purposely made sure everyone was aware of him and that their gods were his enemies. He then went to their gods to execute his plot and question them. He then departed towards their gods, then said, Will you not eat? Question. What is with you that you do not speak? Question. Then he turned against them, striking them with his right hand. He then made them into pieces, except for a large one amongst them, so that they would return to it. They said, Who has done this to our gods? Question. Indeed, he is really among the transgressors, wrong ones. They said, We heard a young man mentioning them. He is called Abraham. Ibrahim. They said, Then bring him before the eyes of the people, so that they may bear witness. Then they advanced towards him rapidly. Thus, his whole people were assembled to witness this event, and then they started questioning him if he destroyed their gods. They said, Have you done this to our gods, O Abraham? Prophet Abraham blamed the large one for destroying their gods into pieces. He then asked them to ask the large one if he can speak. Thus he made his people to use logic and reason to determine if they were right or wrong. He said, rather he did it, the large one of theirs. So ask them if they can articulate, speak. His people realized within their thoughts that they were wrong. He then made them admit that they cannot speak. And then they were hanging down their heads. You definitely knew these cannot articulate, speak. And then he questions them again. He said, Do you then worship instead of Allah that what does not benefit you at all and cannot harm you? He said, How can you worship what you carve while Allah has created you and whatever you are doing? Prophet Abraham is in the process of checkmating his people through logic and reasoning, rationality, Henceforth, after questioning them and proving them wrong, he delivers the messages of Allah through the remembrance of Allah. And as Abraham said to his people, Worship Allah and fear, be conscious of him. That is better for you if you were to know. You only worship other than Allah, graven images, awthana, and you create lies, falsehood. Indeed, those whom you worship other than Allah do not possess, control any provisions for you. Therefore, seek provisions from Allah and worship Him and be thankful, appreciative to Him. To Him you will be returned. And if you deny, cry lies, 
then definitely nations before you have also denied cried lies. And upon the messenger is not accept the clear communication, information. Do they not see how Allah starts, begins the creation, then brings it back, repeats it? That is indeed easy for Allah. Say, travel through the earth and see how He started, began the creation. Then Allah will produce, generate, bring forth the production, genesis, upgrowth of the afterlife, hereafter, al-akhirah. Indeed, Allah evaluates over everything, is capable of all things. He punishes whomever He wills and He has mercy upon whomever He wills. And to Him you will be turned over. And you cannot escape in the earth nor in the heaven. And you do not have other than Allah any patron, protector, nor helper, supporter. And those who have disbelieved in Allah's verses, signs, and the meeting with Him, those have despaired from my mercy. As for those, they will have a painful punishment. Prophet Abraham excellently delivered the messages of Allah, his verses, in front of everyone. What an honorable performance. But it didn't end there. His people disbelieved and argued with him, and he questions them even more. His people argued with him. He said, Do you argue with me concerning Allah while he has definitely guided me? I do not fear what you share, associate partners with him, except that my Lord wills anything. My Lord encompassed all things in knowledge. Then will you not remind yourselves? And how should I fear what you have associated as partners, committed shirk, while you do not fear that you have associated partners with Allah what he did not send down any authorization authority for it, to you. Question. So which of the two divisions, factions, has more right, more worthy, in safety, security, if you were to know? Checkmate. Prophet Abraham completely owned them through logic and reasoning, rationality. But the only answer of his people was that they said, kill him or burn him, but Allah saved him from the fire. Indeed, in that are surely signs for a believing people. Prophet Abraham السلام, has risked his life to spread the truth, knowing that it may cost his life by trying to save his people from the eternal punishment. His people are committing the worst crime, idolatry, shirk. Instead of listening and reasoning with the excellent logic he gave, they said, build a building, structure for him, then throw him into the infernal fire. Even though they were forcing him into the fire, Prophet Abraham questioned them in distress. Oof to you and to what you worship besides Allah. Then will you not use reason? They said, burn him and support your gods if you were accomplishers, doers. They forced Prophet Abraham into the fire to burn him to death. And they thought they won. But Allah saves his servants. We said, O oh fire, be cool and safe for Abraham, peace be upon Abraham. Wasalaman ala Ibrahim. Prophet Abraham and everyone witnessing this saw a tremendous, breathtaking miracle. This was a clear sign of guidance from Allah and Allah's protection. Prophet Abraham sacrificed his life for Allah, and in the cool and safe burning fire, he completes his mission by saying, and he said. You have only taken other than Allah graven images, awthana, as love, friendship, mawadda, between you and the worldly life. Then, afterward, on the day of resurrection, you will reject, disbelieve one another, and you will curse one another. And your abode, place of shelter, is the fire, and you will have no helpers. Thus, they intended, wanted a plot, scheme for him, but we made them the worst losers. Then Lot believed him, and he said, Indeed, I am immigrating to my Lord. He is indeed the Almighty, the Wise. Out of all the people, only one person believed, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him a prophet. Prophet Lut, Lot, alayhi salam. Imagine if everyone believed. Would they have all been prophets? Subhanallah. Only Allah knows.
Those who have believed and do not confuse, mix, pollute their belief, faith with injustice, those ones, they will have security, safety, and they are rightly guided. And that was our argument. We gave it to Abraham against his people. We raise by degrees, ranks, whomever we will. Your Lord is indeed all-wise, omniscient, all-knowing. Indeed, this incredible mission of warning and delivering the messages of Allah, sacrificing for the cause of God, Allah, knowing that it will risk His life, planning, strategizing, and knowing that only Allah can save you, and reminding the importance of Allah, that is a Hanif. That is whom Allah wants us to closely follow. That is the first part of Millata Ibrahim Hanifa, the religion, legacy, creed of Abraham, a true monotheist unifier. And he was not among the mushrikeens, idol worshippers. A clear distinction among the prophets. This is the first major example of Prophet Abraham, a pure monotheist unifier, Hanif, who sacrifices life for the cause of Allah. That is an example of a heart that has surrendered to God alone, Allah alone, Allah wahda. This takes true courage, bravery, determination, and most importantly, Allah's guidance. This is the mindset of a Hanif. This is the mind state of a true pure monotheist unifier, a true believer. This is what Allah wants. And who dislikes, detests the religion, legacy, creed of Abraham, except one who fooled his own soul himself. And most definitely, we have chosen, selected him in the present world, and indeed, he is in the afterlife, hereafter, surely among the righteous ones. One who dislikes the religion of Abraham has fooled himself, his own soul. You fool your own self for not liking and following the religion, legacy, creed of Abraham. And that is being a Hanif. If we go five verses later in the same surah, Surah Baqarah verse 135, Allah compares the Jewish and Christian religion and note what Allah responds. They said, be Judaic, Jewish, or Christians to be rightly guided. Say, rather, the religion, legacy, creed of Abraham, Hanifa, and he wasn't among the idol worshippers, polytheists, mushriks. Subhanallah. In the context of religion, Allah has thus clearly distinguished those who are Jewish and Christians from what the true religion is, the religion of Abraham, Hanifa, true monotheist unifier. This is once again a clear distinction among some of the major prophets. The Jewish religion started from Prophet Musa salam's time, all the way until Prophet Jesus salam, the Christians. All the prophets in between Musa and Jesus were ruling the Jewish people. Thus they, Jewish and Christians, have caused a division, separation, whereas it has always been the religion of Abraham because he came before them and Allah reminded them through all the prophets that were sent to them. Therefore, we are unified under the religion of Abraham according to the Quran, the words of Allah, as he compares the Jewish and Christian religions with it. Unfortunately, we Muslims have also divided ourselves after Prophet Muhammad had established the correct teachings and religion, the religion of Abraham. Once again, Allah clearly distinguishes Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Ibrahim and all of mankind in Surah 3 verse 68 as follows. Indeed, the most worthy of mankind, the people, with Ibrahim, with Abraham, are surely those who closely followed him and this Prophet Muhammad and those who have believed. And Allah is the ally, protector, patron of the believers. MashaAllah. Do you see how distinguished Prophet Abraham is? Allah is letting us know who is most worthy, entitled, and deserving of Abraham among mankind. This verse is comparing all of mankind of his worthiness and specifically Prophet Muhammad. That means Prophet Muhammad is clearly an amazing prophet and a follower of Prophet Ibrahim. This is further elaborated in Surah 16 verse 120 to 123 as follows. Indeed, Abraham was, has been a nation devoutly obedient to Allah as a Hanifa, and he wasn't among the idol worshippers, polytheists, mushrikeens. Thankful, grateful for his favors, blessings, graces. 
He picked, chose, elected him, and he guided him to a straight path. And we brought, gave him in the present world, hasana, goodness, excellence. And indeed, he is in the hereafter, surely among the righteous ones. Then, afterward, we inspired, revealed to you, Muhammad, that closely follow the religion, legacy, creed of Abraham as a Hanifa, and he was not among the idol worshippers, polytheists, mushrikeens. Surah An Nahl, Surah 16, verse 123, unquestionably proves that even Prophet Muhammad was to closely follow the religion of Abraham as a Hanifa. He obviously did so, but the disbelievers and the idol worshippers divided us Muslims with the fake hadiths attributed to him. Now that being clarified, the only major prophet that came before Prophet Abraham is Prophet Noah One might wonder why the religion, creed, legacy of Noah was not chosen to be followed instead of the religion of Abraham. And this is where the second and final major example of Prophet Abraham radiates and it distinguishes him from Prophet Noah. There's a critical test of emotional intelligence and lesson in Prophet Noah's story that clearly differentiates him from Prophet Abraham. Because of this critical emotional intelligence test, Allah makes Prophet Abraham the leader for mankind. As Surah 2 verse 124, which we'll see later on. Let me show you what I mean by analyzing this critical situation in Prophet Noah's story first. 